Hey everyone, Elite here with another video for the July World Watercolor Month series. I hope you're enjoying the series. I know I am enjoying it, and even though some pages seem to be a little bit more challenging than others, all in all, this has been such a lovely challenge and probably the first one that I have managed to almost complete. I mean, it's today I'm recording this, it's July 21st, and I have painted almost every single day, maybe a couple of um, days on the weekends I missed. But other than that, yeah, it's been going great. So uh, hopefully you've also managed to do something that works for you. And today's color is going to be lavender. And I really wasn't sure what to do. I don't usually have these kind of like very bluish type of colors as my main ones. So you're going to see me, um, yeah, just trying a few different things as I explore the blues in my palette. So lavender is actually, it's more of a, to me, it kind of reminds me like a periwinkle or cornflower blue color. And the version I currently have in my palette is the Rembrandt one. Van Gogh also has a really great version. This is not a complicated color to formulate. Uh, most brands use just ultramarine blue and white. So also you could make your own. I use this color a lot, so I do find it very convenient to have it in my palette. And um, Daniel Smith also has a version, but I think especially if you're in Europe and you can find the Van Gogh or the Rembrandt one, uh, it's, you know, you can buy like, <laughs> I don't know, probably seven um, or five tubes of it, of Van Gogh lavender for the price of one Daniel Smith one. Daniel Smith one is also great, but I don't think um, it's worth the extra cash in this particular case. So I decided to seek inspiration online and I went to Pixabay, which is a place where you can find, you know, royalty free, uh, free for commercial use images. And I just searched for lavender. I don't particularly like, I don't know, I haven't painted a lot of lavender plants. Um, I do love how they look. I went to France particularly to see the lavender fields a few years ago. <laughs> and yeah, it was beautiful. And I actually painted, I think, a couple of fields. But but yeah, um, I haven't really painted a more of a close-up. But I found an image that I thought was very inspiring on Pixabay. And I decided to just follow it. So unlike pretty much I think all of my previous pages in this sketchbook you do need to work here in layers to get that you know kind of blurry depth of field feel to it um, you know you have kind of more the plants in the back that are more blurred and then the ones in the front that are more in focus so I went in with the first layer and now I'm going in with the second layer, which will be kind of the, the flowers that are in the front of my view or in the field. Uh, so they're more in focus and there are more details, more contrast, more everything. I think one of the most important things here to make your life much, much easier is to find a brush that just makes painting these petals really easy and this slanted um, brush from Silverlined I think it's called it's I think it's pretty inexpensive one I don't use it a lot but for this purpose it was really perfect and made my life very easy the shape is right for this particular object for this flower and also the fact that it's kind of thin and small and it's not round um, means that it doesn't hold a ton of water and usually when you want to add those um, almost like final layers I guess or second or third layer when you're really dealing with the detail you want more concentrated 
watercolor. So you want more pigment, less water. And you can see how my mixes are pretty concentrated at this stage. If you go in with like a large juicy brush, you're most likely you'll make kind of a mess and you won't get that um, just concentrated uh, application of color. So I'm also playing another thing that I find important is to get different... Ver oh, now you saw how to open my phone. <laughs> Don't come to my house and open my phone. <laughs> well, there's nothing interesting on there. Um, so you want to have a variation of color. It gets a little bit boring, in my opinion, if you just use the one color throughout the... Um, the plant. It doesn't have to be like botanically accurate, at least not in my book. Um, of course, you can look at the photos and look, you know, in detail. Sometimes it does help a lot, but I just use colors that I like. And, you know, I try to make the, make the flower so it makes kind of sense. So, uh, in the center, it'll have just a bit darker colors, some more shades and that sort of thing but you just want to keep the colors uh, changing a little bit and it's always a good idea in my book to use colors that granulate and you see now I it, this was a little bit too watery but um, yeah it's 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 okay you can go back and you can add more color this paper even though it's only 30% cotton it behaves surprisingly well and by that I mean that it just it's it's beautiful I prefer it to well it does have some cotton in it so maybe I shouldn't be surprised that I prefer it to most of the cellulose papers that I've tried but um, yeah I wasn't actually when I looked on the Fabriano website and saw that it's only 30 percent cotton I was surprised because it's just um, behaves so well with watercolor so what you also want to keep in mind is just the ver variation of size, amount of detail. You always want like certain plants to have a little bit more detail and then others to be more abstract, uh, looser. It just makes for a more interesting painting, a more interesting composition. And I decided, you know, it was just a little bit too, I don't know, monochromatic, a little bit boring. So I decided to add a couple of bees, I'm going to say these are. I don't know, maybe they're wasps. I have no idea. But uh, I got the courage <laughs> to do this from uh, Jean Haynes' beautiful book, Atmospheric Flowers. I think it's one of my favorite books of hers. The last two I'm not a big fan of. I feel like her previous books just have more meat to them. And Atmospheric Atmospheric Flowers is, is, is a beautiful, beautiful book. Very inspiring. It has a lot of like step-by-step -step where you can get, you know, real tried and tested techniques and tips on painting specific flowers. But I just find the whole spirit of it... Um, very inspiring. She is always encouraging artists to try new things, different things, to be different, to not do things like everyone else is doing. And that is something that really speaks to me. So yeah, but one of the things she mentions in that book is that adding some insects, so maybe bees or butterflies, can add a lot to a floral piece. And I agree. And I decided to add some bees. And the reason I went with bees and not butterflies is, first of all, because uh, I also really enjoy painting butterflies, but that's not the reason. Um, they were in the photo that I found. And also, I thought that yellow would be a really great choice of color addition here, that pop. Uh, because it's mostly, you know, a purplish painting and yellow and purple are complementary colors, which means they really kind of help each other pop. Um, you can see that the flowers in the photo are a lot more on the bluish side, whereas my version is more on the kind of red-violet side. Um, yeah, you can see some of the colors 
the I think I used brilliant red violet it kind of took over a little bit uh, over the lavender but I'm okay with it I go with the flow and lavender itself it doesn't it's not a super dark deep color so I feel you kind of need to uh, add some other colors with more value or a darker value um, but I do love lavender and I use it a lot and it's it's a staple in my palette for sure um, so yeah so these are my cute bees and soon I'll show you the close-up this was really fun to paint I really enjoyed it I just love the whole undone feel of it and yeah I really really enjoyed it so i hope you liked it also and have a wonderful day see you again tomorrow or soon <laughs>